Okay, good. So good morning again, and uh, uh, let's continue in the first part of uh, today's class uh, with the exercise that we started yesterday on the uh, need finding uh, uh, planning. Uh, yesterday we planned more or less uh, with a good level of detail the uh, observation part. Uh, so we planned how to uh, find some people, what kind of people uh, we are uh, selecting, uh, and uh, how we are going to observe them, what kind of uh, information. So information we want to get. So as we said tonight, uh, we all went uh, to observe uh, ideally uh, some um, some uh, seven, six, seven, eight persons um, during, uh, during their uh, study activities. Uh, and half of them more or less were freshmen, half of them were senior. And uh, we, we tried to observe them and maybe have some uh, quick question about uh, uh, why they did some action that seemed seemed like interesting or strange or, uh, or wrong <laughs> uh, to us um, and this was an initial feedback uh, as we said when the, when we started the, the, the observation um, we really don't know what we are going to find okay that's the spirit that we should have uh, uh, in order to get really useful information. So I don't really need the, um, sorry, yeah. I, I don't really need the, uh, to do observations if I already know or, or, or if I think I know <laughs> uh, what, uh, what will be discovered. So we should really be open and, uh, and observe and uh, uh, trust that something interesting will, uh, will come out. The next step, uh, uh, for us will be the uh, interviews. So let's let's share again uh, this uh, uh, document that we saw yesterday. Uh, and interviews may be of different types, uh, done with different types of users. Uh, so and of course, depending on the type of interview and on the type of user you are interviewing, you will get, of course, different information. Okay. Uh, so, for example, interviewing with lead users of so people that are really uh, into uh, this activity, and so they are uh, very, you know, uh, they have very high demands and uh, very high, uh, very strong, uh, say, opinions on what uh, they are doing, or uh, interviews to experts, uh, so subjects that are knowledgeable. So, in this case, not, that would not be just students, but maybe also teachers. Hmm? Um, so uh, trying to to find a, a different point of view for people that are really working in the field. Uh, in some other cases, this is more, you know, they're just some ideas, OK? Uh, different uh, modalities. Uh, camera studies, are, I, I give you a, a small portable camera, or you know, uh, I tell you with your smartphone to, my, to make some pictures. and. Uh, and uh, just tell me and snap a picture or, or make a video of yourself doing the, the, the activity. OK, so that people document themselves uh, in, while they are doing uh, this, uh, uh, their task. So this is just to, to tell you that there are very, very uh, different ways, uh, many, many different ways uh, uh, where we can try to get some more specific information about a single person. And of course, we have all the uh, surveys uh, uh, that are more uh, for online gathering of information and more for a high number of persons okay but they are not very good for exploring uh, alternatives or for understanding uh, the needs uh, uh, if we don't have already a structured view of what we want to get so in this phase of the finding process uh, is they're not very useful because uh, uh, we already have <laughs> to develop a set of questions that we cannot go deeper. Um, okay, this we have some ex other examples here, like uh, interviews for understanding the sequence of actions that you are uh, executing. Um, and uh, there's uh, this very strong uh, no, idea of interviews, so the so called uh, five Y or just a why interview. Okay, when you are, this uh, is a technique for understanding uh, um, the reasons uh, for people, okay? Why people are doing some actions or are doing some different actions from what you expect. 
um, for example, yeah, I ask uh, uh, something to a person that it will give me a reply. They, so I don't know what. Uh, what do you prefer for uh, following classes? They will tell me um, to maybe follow that on my smartphone. Uh, just one possible answer. Why? And they will tell me, well, because it's uh, always with me, I can walk through my house. And I, I ask again, why? And uh, uh, so why are you, uh, do you want or do you need to walk through your house? And uh, then he maybe he will tell me, okay, we, we, because I want to find a corner where there's not, not much noise and so on. So um, from a very uh, you know, innocent question, what's the, what device do you prefer? Maybe we can discover that one problem uh, that the user is trying to fight against uh, is the noise in their environment. Okay, uh, maybe we didn't uh, come up with the idea of asking about the environment, asking about the noise directly, or maybe it would, would seem impolite. Okay, uh, but uh, if you, you know, uh, without getting you know angry responses, so don't don't let the user angry because they are very difficult questions. Why are you doing that? And when you explain, it, it, it will you will again ask why about their explanation and so on, like you are talking to a child that which is trying to learn everything okay um, that, and they're asking a lot of why questions and, but this is interesting because it tries to uh, uh, the user will help you in this way to pass from the, the their actions to their motivations hmm? and of course we need to fix the motivations not just uh, uh, the actions uh, this is one one technique that we may use uh, uh, and you see that in, in this example we, we have uh, uh, several uh, other Possibility. I, I don't want to uh, say spend too much time in analyzing the document. It's just to show you that there's more variability than what we had uh, in the slides, of course, that we try to focus more on, on the activity they want to uh, uh, see. But if you're, I would suggest you just to have a look uh, at, the, at the possibility, just to, uh, um, let's say, think about uh, different types of questions that we may ask or different types of interactions that we may have with our uh, users. Okay, um, so let's assume that we are now want uh, uh, to um, plan these sort of interviews uh, with some users. Okay, um, well, first of all, I forgot uh, the, the users to whom. Uh, who, who are going, are we going to interview? Uh, there's one possibility, and this one may be what we will suggest uh, in, in the lab, in, in this course, uh, is to interview the same people that we had uh, for the observation. Of course, they should be the same people in the same target group. Hmm? Uh, but we could uh, select from the observation, we had three or four people, we select one or two of them. Hmm? For example, maybe one or two, if we have the time and the resources freshmen, Uh, I can write this morning, uh, and one or two seniors. And uh, maybe uh, out of the, observ uh, from the observation group. This maybe is not the ideal choice. No? If we could make eight interviews, four and four, from a different set of students, uh, we would get more information for sure, because we are going to involve different people and different people will have uh, maybe different opinion or different needs. Uh, but we try, we are always trying to manage or to reduce also the effort uh, in general, not just in the course, but in general, uh, when we are doing design of, of interaction. So maybe we can reuse some of the information that we have. The same people is there. Uh, we don't interview all of them. We interview only half of them, or only a portion of them. Because you know, observing is just one task, and the interview is some some deeper task that involves more time, and we want to balance, of course, the effort. So, uh, first of all, how much time do we have for the interviews, and in this time, how, ma how many people uh, are we able to find, and for these people, uh, do we keep on say talking to the same people we had already there for the observation? So, just uh, after a coffee. 
let's, let's sit down and make an interview or uh, let's seek other people so that we have a wider view of the opinion. Of course, it depends on, on the time and resources that we have, okay? So this is the minimum, the minimum possibility. We, at least we need one freshman and one senior because we want to keep the, the two groups and to analyze them. If we have two, it's better than one, of course. It's a very uh, stupid uh, sentence, but uh, it's true. And, uh, uh, and if, it's, if they are new, they will be better. Otherwise, we reuse the same people from the observation group and so on. So um, again, we have to choose this, OK? And then the type of interview. So uh, are we making one-to-one -one interviews? Direct, I call them direct, uh, let's say one-to-one -one interviews. Or are we interviewing, are we interviewing all of them together? Okay, what they call normally a focus group. So I'm sitting with uh, one person, and we conduct the interview. And later on, the second person comes comes in, or tomorrow, and we have this second uh, chat. Or we uh, try to bring everybody together, these three or four people, with the interviewer, and we have a group discussion. So in a focus group. Uh, Okay, of course, the, the, the time, the needed time is less because we do only one session and everybody will be there. You have the option for having a comparison of ideas. Okay, uh, um, let's hope they don't start arguing, but at least they can start sharing their different points of view, different opinions and different habits to the question that you have, uh, that you pose. So usually make a question and let everybody respond on their own and then stimulate the discussion with you and among them themselves uh, so that uh, maybe each one can comment on the responses of others and so on. And then you move on to the next question in the same way, let everybody respond, uh, give everybody the chance to speak, of course, um, try to avoid too many repetitions, but uh, they should respond to the question and start uh, also discussing or commenting it uh, uh, among the, uh, themselves. Uh, a direct interview may, uh, is uh, better if you going to if you want to go deeper into the needs of one person, or if these needs are are uh, really different. Uh, a focus group uh, uh, gives you a more let's say average opinion, uh, and uh, it's highly dependent also on the on the attitude of the person. So, or say in every focus group, you will have one person that only wants that wants to do all the talking. And maybe many others uh, are sitting down and uh, are sharing less. Uh, while in one-to-one -one interviews, you have the really uh, opportunity of stimulating each and every person to really share their opinion. So even you know, the character, the attitude, uh, is important uh, in this kind of dynamics. Uh, the third, op the third uh, possibility would be uh, to do a survey, for example, an online survey. Uh, but as we mentioned, uh, this would uh, reach a high number of persons but uh, with a very uh, predefined uh, set of questions. And uh, so it will not be very useful in this exploration phase. OK, but so, for example, in our case, since we have only a very few people and maybe we are, we are already observing them, we can de uh, decide to go for these direct interviews one to one, which are also easier to conduct Okay, because it's easier for you to, to follow the questions. So we, we decided that we are making one interview with one, two, or three, or four people, sorry, two or three or four people, depending on how many people we were able to recruit uh, in the first step. And then uh, the task for us now is, is to plan the questions, to decide the question, to construct, okay, the template of the, of the, of the interview. Um, and uh, basically, it can be as informal as we want or more formal if we prefer, but we should uh, at least uh, try to have the same uh, sequence uh, of, of questions or, or topics, uh, at least if, if, are, if maybe there are specific questions, maybe there are general topics uh, to discuss with the, with the persons. Especially in one-to-one -one interviews, we don't want to be too much uh, uh, strict uh, on the kind of question. So is the discussion, if the user uh, is taking the discussion to some topic, uh, it's because th that topic is important for them. It's more important uh, than what you had in mind. So follow them and listen to them. 
don't try to steer them back uh, to the kind of uh, uh, answers that you were expecting okay so this will also help us not to assume or pre-assume something um so the general structure will look more or less always the same let's uh, maybe interview structure let's uh, let's make first uh, introductions and uh, the goal of, of the uh, clarify the goal of the interview so always say we are not testing you we are testing an idea we are trying to develop an idea so you are helping us uh, uh, in understanding this, uh, this this new idea, new project, new new product that we are defining, uh, so it should always be with clear and uh, get all the permissions, uh, maybe to record their voice or their video uh, for, from the user. Okay, so we are recording this interview. Are you fine with that? And so we should always uh, ask uh, for for the permission and tell them that they, we are maybe recording them uh, for um, uh, for that analysis and we ensure that uh, the results will be anonymous anonymity well anonymous results uh, so that your name or uh, whether you were uh, saying something or something else will never be revealed for example in our transcript that person for us will be user three so you will be user three for us and uh, nobody uh, no, will know who is the real person behind user three okay um, so this is the first step that you should be ensure that we make is to just to clarify the context okay people the, the uh, don't feel that they have uh, uh, to provide the, the, right, the right answers. Okay, I think the most important uh, uh, sense that you can say is that there are no no right answers, right, no right or wrong answers. Okay, you just uh, tell us what you think, hmm? or your opinion, your impressions, your desires, okay? your problems. And so this is the first part, and usually as the last part, uh, at the end of the so at the end of in the interview, we will have something like uh, uh, gather uh, statistical data, like uh, you know, gender, age, uh, profession, and so on. So the last question is just okay. We are closing that. We need some some more further data. Of course, uh, if the some of this information if the user is not you know, comfortable with providing some of this information uh, we don't need to insist that you just uh, okay uh, thank them anyway but will be just used for classifying uh, the, the responses from a statistical point of view and uh, maybe if we can have a, an appreciation a small gift maybe even a a small chocolate <laughs> would be enough probably uh, something like okay i thank you for your time we appreciate that and in in exchange for that we are giving you this uh, small gift or more uh, you know uh, in handshake <laughs> it would be enough or depends okay uh, so this how it, how it opens and how it closes uh, in between we have all the questions okay so the questions you start, uh, uh, and this more or less is for every interview. And, uh, and then we have uh, all the questions in between. What are the, sp uh, the specific questions for our exercise? Okay, so this is more, let's say, until now is the theory, okay? Um, now we need to create specific questions for our users. Just remember what we wanted to observe. Okay, uh, we wanted to observe uh, these kind of activities and maybe more. Okay, we had some questions about which part uh, of the study uh, activity is more important for them. Uh, when? The, we can act where are which are the moments in which there are more information more uh, 
uh, let's say issues uh, and what are the media and so on okay if they interact more engage more with teachers and, and so on. so we must reread the definition or the analysis that we made on the engage action on engaging and also this uh, uh, idea that we need to separate uh, uh, the target also the target group uh, we need to separate the freshmen and senior uh, seniors that we want because we want all of them and uh, we have a quite a precise uh, definition of who the users are so with all this information in mind uh, we should start uh, uh, our set of questions okay so the question could be so uh, do you have do, do you have any suggestions for the question that we may ask may ask which platform i'm writing them down okay so we comment them uh, which platform okay of course for for university study okay other options other ideas other suggestions <clears throat> how do they how do they like to perform interactions interaction you say so how do you like because they are a question Uh, I think these two questions are too directed for the moment. So imagine the first question you ask is, uh, which platform are you using? Uh, maybe they are not using just one platform. They are using three because they are you know, chatting on Slack and uh, sharing the videos on YouTube uh, or hmm, some combination of them. So. Uh, in this case, we are, we, it assumes uh, something. It assumes that they are using a platform. Maybe they don't, uh, or they use more than one. And uh, uh, it focuses the attention on the tool, not on the person. Right? Uh, the second question has more or less the same issues. Uh, to perform interaction, uh, OK. Uh, when, if I if you make me this question, I would say maybe oh I I prefer uh, chatting in text, but it really uh, doesn't lead you to explain. Okay, I prefer chatting during the class, but I prefer uh, voice uh, calls uh, or voice uh, WhatsApp voice messages uh, with my friends uh, and something like that. Okay, there are two directed at two closed uh, questions. We'll try to get, of course, we need this information, but we need to extract this information in a, say, uh, in a softer way. Hmm? Uh, so I, I will start, uh, uh, which year are you enrolled? Okay, the enrollment here would be here, sorry, in the statistical data, profession, in this case, enrollment. And so on. Okay. And this, of course, we we need it, uh, but it's not uh, uh, an open question. Uh, how do you attend your remote lectures? Is a more it's a more open question. But we are already focusing on one aspect of the learning. I like much much better uh, the suggestion of by Crowley is uh, how is the your typical day of study, which is a very simple question, very open, 
and they will tell you what they want. And so if they are telling you about uh, the lectures, uh, then you can follow up uh, with some question about the, the lectures and they are start, starting to say, oh, oh, your typical day for, for, for your studies. They will start uh, taking a, a talking about, uh, okay, and working with my friends uh, or I study on the books or whatever. And so we, uh, we understand what is the, the aspect that is more important for them. Um, this other question, does the online teaching platform satisfy your demands? Uh, uh, it's, it's not their job uh, to design or redesign or... Um, these are um, the, the, the technical issues, the, the, technical, the technical aspects, okay? Uh, uh, it's our job to do this kind of design. So I cannot ask, it's not exactly your question, but I cannot ask what is wrong with, with the platform. Okay, uh, does the online teaching platforms, uh, which ones we don't know, satisfy your demands, uh, which are your demands? Uh, and this is a, a typical question that uh, can be misunderstood. So everybody thinks that the different part and uh, they will reply with they, what they have in mind, but we don't know what they have in mind. So it lacks a bit of context, but this can be fixed. The, the other problem with this question, they, they would say no. Because this is a yes or no question, okay? So we should avoid uh, yes or no questions because otherwise we need to ask them, but why not, okay? But, and also yes or no may be difficult to decide because the answer usually is, it depends on some things yes and some, some, some things no. So we need, need to get them to discuss, okay? We don't want to fill check boxes. We just need to uh, understand. So I think a good starting point would be this one. So how does your day go while studying? Okay, and uh, maybe uh, we can. Uh, uh, yes, what do you appreciate and what not? Uh, not about uh, your saying. Uh, um, Online says online lessons. Uh, I I would be. I would not mention specifically the online sessions. Okay, what you appreciate uh, about uh, the online study. So I'm using I'm trying to use a more neutral term. Study could be lectures, could be exercises, could be labs, could be exams, and so on. And would not so it's uh, so they will tell us something and they will try to ask them to give their opinion. I, I like this. Okay, uh, the question about what do you think about the current implementation of the platform, um, I put it here at the end. It's again something very technical um, about the implementation. Maybe we don't care about their opinion about the tools, okay? Uh, let me rephrase this, this question and it's sim very similar to the, last, uh, to the other one in a way that will talk about the users instead of talking about the platform. Okay, do you find, do you encounter any problems uh, with the online tools or platforms? So you see the subject is changed. Do you have problems? Not does the platform has problems. Hmm? And so they will talk about their experience. Hmm? We are not asking them to evaluate a platform, evaluate a tool, give their opinion, their scoring on a tool. They will not give us anything because they will be too much framed in what they know about that platform and try to only understand in the context of that platform. Um, and so uh, it's always ask, asking questions about what they think, what they do, what they feel, what are the, uh, so can you tell me me some examples, some stories about uh, problems? Study problems due to the online issue, 
or some good stories also why not i could do this i could work with my friend and we can work maybe late at night while the university is not possible to go there in those hours so we are very happy we are exploiting our time and we are also joking around while we study and in the in the study room that would not be possible because we need to be quiet i don't know some good and some bad of the situation um and uh, of course these are a lot of these are uh, open questions and uh, as Coralie is mentioning uh, depending on what they answer the next questions must change and it's normal okay so that's why this is not uh, what I was saying before a survey an online survey is too rigid for us because then we'll have we we'll have a set of questions we only the answer they may be just a tick box or just a short text uh, and we don't know what to do but uh, for example if they hear they say we i appreciate uh, being able to having for example the video lectures okay right now we are taking that for granted every lecture is recorded and i can see uh, and see it again when i want but just remember that last year this was not the normal mm -hmm. So if you missed a lecture, maybe the professor was kind enough to record it, but in many other cases, you just missed the lecture. Huh? So uh, it's something that we didn't talk about even in, your, in our discussion yesterday, because for us, it's so normal. Because now it's not, uh, but for me, it's not for everybody. Hmm? Uh, because here, maybe in computer engineer, we are used for many years to having lectures recorded and some other kinds of students, uh, it's the first time and they are discovering that they are useful or maybe they discover that they're not useful. Um, and so this is what, something that we took for granted, but maybe it's an important point for them. And if they raise that point, uh, we should follow them. So yes, we have to improvise. We have to, to follow. Uh, the, the the discussion of the user. So I, having I always have some some say general question like uh, uh, tell me more about this. Can you give me some examples? How does it make you feel? Okay. Uh, we don't want to ask something like, how would you fix this? Okay. No, something like, uh, how would you fix this? They are not the designers of the new system, no? but they can tell us what is working for them and why. Uh, and it will be maybe our job to identify which parts are for them the most stressful and then work on them and we can propose a fix. Um, okay, so uh, the the interviews uh, will be highly personal, hmm? of, uh, and and we follow them. We have uh, only a, a you know a trace of possible questions to ask, and uh, uh, we follow what they respond, and we try to to. We have two goals in mind. One is extract the information that we really, really, uh, we really would know that we need, and the second is to discover new information that we didn't think about. So all these open questions are good for this. Um, we should also remember, uh, for example, for the freshmen. Okay. Uh, uh, some question like uh, for is the. Uh, is your first year or in you are at the first year what what uh, are uh, your or what are you missing most for example and for the senior you they maybe a question like uh, since you have you have a uh, many, many or several years of experience. How did they help you? So 
So in a way, it's a very, again, very general question, but they try to steer the, dis the discussion onto the topic of the difference between first years and, uh, and the others. So we, because we want to gather this information. So uh, I will not ask as a first question, but just after a, a bit of warm up, we start discussing things and then say, okay, Mike, uh, about what you said, what is the part of this that uh, uh, is more uh, is more, is more of a problem because you are in the first year, for example? Okay, and uh, and so we we, we dig down. Huh? Uh, there, are there any information that we wanted to know? Yes, for example, this one, live classes recorded, yeah, and so so maybe we can ask a question about this, uh, like. Um, what are the what are the teaching the study moment activities that you like most or do you like less or maybe like is not the right word uh, you find uh, more or less uh, useful. Hmm? Something like that, because then we want to that, do that. And that will probably also tell us that they are using some tools and not others. And uh, at this point, maybe we can, we can ask uh, what tools or what instruments are you using? Hmm? So this would be and what uh, tools uh, hmm? uh, do you encounter any pro okay uh, Dario is saying in the third question do you encounter any problems so the user could just uh, reply no uh, I still have to find <laughs> one person that never encounters any problems uh, so Yes, but if you um, one way to reframe the question would be um, what are the most uh, frequent problems? No, no, frequent, not because people are not able to. What are the some problems that you encounter with online tools? Or what is the last problem that you encounter with your online tools? And so you start with some example. Um, but that assumes that they already have a problem. So, uh, I, I would take the risk, okay, of saying, uh, or, or, or just maybe which problems uh, have you encountered? If any. With the online tools okay these are probably gathered from a yes or no but it already already pushes you to to um how do you deliver assignments that you use the university platform or other one i uh these are uh, this question like uh no, martinez is something that goes uh, uh, after this one what are the study activity that you find more or less useful? And then or, uh, as a follow-up of this, uh, uh, we may ask, uh, uh, what is, uh, so three questions. Okay, what is the, the good, the bad, and the tools about uh, the different uh, uh, moments of study? Uh, for example, the lectures, uh, assignments, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay, all the categories. So uh, it could be just uh, there's a lot of questions here. The good, the bad, the tools uh, for three or four, five or, or six different uh, uh, learning moments. Uh, so maybe we could ask just uh, tell me one word. about uh, all of these combinations okay so i was saying okay about the online lectures what's the good part 
and they will tell you one word nothing okay or um, you know i i can see them better because when i was sitting in the last uh, uh, row of the classroom i couldn't see the, the uh, you know the blackboard or whatever the bed hmm? the, the connection is flaky we can hear very very well uh, the tools and they will tell you so just short questions and of course after this uh, a list of questions. Uh, want you add, do you want to add more? And uh, um, among uh, all the good parts, which is the best? Among the bad parts, and the same. Which is the worst? Hmm? Okay. So this, uh, uh, I would say, is a wildcard question. Okay, you can put it in every moment when you you say that uh, you you feel that there's something interesting. Uh, you only they only said something they send something that surprises you and you want to know more you want to understand and so you don't need to to ask them in in sequence okay and also the the, the sequence may change uh, so uh, these sort of uh, questions here in a way uh, we are asking them for understanding what's that the the type of activities okay uh this part is still uh, uh, in a way not well not well covered so probably i would try to also insert a question about uh, the supervised slash synchronous uh, or unsupervised slash asynchronous uh, learning because we don't have any anything explicit so uh for example we can uh, have it as a follow-up question to this one what do you appreciate about the online study and what not uh, and uh, as a follow-up question we could have something like uh, uh, do you prefer activities synchronous with the teacher So could be video, could be chat, okay, uh, or uh, activities in your time uh, slash with peers. It may be not prefer um, but it more some because not just a personal preference but it's uh, um, uh, do you find yourself better with the, do you uh, feel feel more comfortable maybe Uh, of course, when we do this um, interview, just imagine that we have a sheet, uh, a piece of paper, a sheet of paper where we have printed all these questions, okay? And uh, maybe we are asking them in this sequence, maybe not because we are following uh, the, the discussion. So it's a good to have a recording or taking notes about the answers. And also marking which question, which points, which topics uh, have been already touched. Okay, uh, so maybe something was already said, uh, and so we don't know, we don't need to ask a question because we already touched the topic in a previous discussion. Okay, it's normal. It's just uh, an outline for you, and then not to forget uh, about some important topic that you want to to, to explore. Okay, so the question that we put at the at the end, in a way, should uh, come out during the discussions of the previous points okay how do you attend remote lectures 
is something like uh, how is your typical date and what do you appreciate, for example. Okay, it will come out uh, also the tools and maybe more specifically the tools for lectures will be here. Um, which platforms are you currently using? Again, will will come out from this sort of question, but maybe probably it will already be mentioned many times before. Uh, are you like to perform interaction? Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, this is a question of, and uh, also David is suggesting something like, uh, uh, how do you interact with the teacher? questions uh, for example for questions but uh, maybe maybe also for other uh, reasons and uh, also could be how to interact with your peers hmm? with your with peers for example work groups uh, uh, study together whatever hmm? and so these are in a way okay already covered so it's not that we don't want this information is that we need, we need to get this information by asking about the users not asking about the tools because otherwise we'll get an, an opinion which is not an expert opinion people we don't are not expert at system design don't see maybe what the real problem is huh? and uh, uh, does the IT platform satisfy your demands? Again, we already covered that. Uh, what do you find about the content presentation? Again, we are not asking about the platform, but about uh, your experience with the system. Hmm? Okay. Um, so I think these are a good set of questions that could, where you could spend uh, one hour uh, chatting with uh, with every every subject, every user. And probably you can get most of the information. At the end, and of course, uh, uh, one question that uh, I am putting here in the general slide, one question that we should always have uh, is, uh, what question didn't we ask you? So what is the question that we didn't ask and is important for you? It's another way of saying, uh, uh, do you want to tell me more? But asking, tell, you want to tell me more, it's a sort of a, no, like a blank sheet question. You don't know what to write them. So if you phrase it like this, uh, it's, a, it's just a joke, OK, in a way. So the, we are at the end of the interview. Uh, what question did, for, did we forget Okay, that you wanted us to ask uh, or we wanted us to ask you? or you would have liked to reply. And so maybe at the end, it turns out that some new topic will be opened. And uh, and, and and here is where, of course, we, can, we may discover also something new. Here, uh, it's very unlikely that we will tell you nothing, OK? Maybe there's also some something hiding in the corner. We, we had a, a, this interview as a warm up for their brain where they start thinking about uh, their experience. Uh, and in some corner, there's something burning, okay, <laughs> to come out. And uh, very likely we will. Uh, so it's a sort of a psychology exercise uh, rather than a technology one. Uh, of course, uh, if you chat for one hour, it will be extremely difficult uh, to remember everything people said. So it's good to be maybe two persons two of us to conduct the interview. So one is doing the talking and the other is taking notes and maybe recording also the interview so that we can listen to it again and maybe transcribe it in text, in full text and then outline uh, the sentences that are more important for us so that we can have a, a shorter uh, outline of the most important points that we can use in the next design steps. So the general framework is always the same, similar, but the specific question you say that uh, uh, are uh, very specific. And uh, what we said in the slides is that first you need to know what you want to get, what information you want to get. 
not just ask questions uh, because they look nice okay uh, we we had our information goals here these were our real points that we wanted to discover and also this issue about the freshman and uh, there's no explicit question about any of this but uh, we may uh, we were careful that all these topics should be brought up in some way in other questions okay if we didn't have this analysis before then probably we, we may have asked questions that are not so relevant or repetitive and so we don't know where what information we want to highlight uh, we will be highlighting information that covers all those topics from the analysis before and maybe new topics that uh, come out uh, uh, later hmm? so after the, the interview is finished uh, we have a lot of work to do okay for analyzing highlighting finding patterns finding whether the same issue is brought out more than once how strongly the user is bringing up some some issue and there it will be a, a suggestion that that problem is uh, is important okay that part of his activity is important and then is where we want to focus uh, our development mm -hmm. or at least we want to be sure that our platform our solution will be very strong very good in that specific area because it's where the users are feeling most okay um, so that's also why we try to limit uh, the number of people uh, the number of interviews because okay it can take one hour to do an interview but maybe it takes two or three <laughs> to analyze the data now all the information trying to find which is more important than what so it seems like uh, we are trying to conduct that in an informal way but we have a lot of information uh, under the hood that we want to to, to process and we want to uh, collect okay um, Okay, so I think uh, it could be one, one possible trace. I hope they will help you tomorrow in the in the in the lab. You will be asked to start planning for the observation phase of your project. So maybe some of the discussion that we had today on this specific example may also be replicated. Uh, don't use this ex exercise as a cut and paste, of course. Okay, I don't want to see this same the same question, the same structure, identical. Uh, in uh, in your project because uh, the real point is uh, uh, the analysis we analyze what information we need uh, and then we build the questions around them then the shape of the question is more or less the same because we are asking about the users asking open questions asking about opinions about feelings uh, and behind you are trying to get uh, let's say more uh, specific information about the system but this is our job so never make a question about the system hmm? Okay, um, are there any comments or question about this part? Okay, so I will save this uh, example file and uh, I can spend the last uh, 30 minutes of this uh, class uh, in introducing uh, the uh, this other topic of uh, um, task analysis that will be the next step after need finding uh, let's see what uh, uh, what what we mean uh, sorry this is the, the wrong title it should not be here okay this is the, <laughs> the right slide so uh, if you remember, we have shown this picture in the in the first lecture of the course saying, OK, this is the more or less the, the, the human centered design process that we are going to follow. And uh, we up to now, up to this moment, uh, we discussed uh, all the part about need finding. So actually, what is wanted? What do the users want with that? understanding of want uh, which is not just uh, they, they say they want but they really want or need okay and we uh, discovered uh, say tools and tricks uh, to try to extract this information and the next step uh, will be an analysis of uh, uh, this, the, um, the features of the system that uh, we can provide to them for solving these wants and there are also tools uh, 
like the task analysis that we are talking today um, that help us in structure this analysis okay uh, people want uh, a better experience with uh, you know um, submitting assignments i don't know or for getting feedback about the assignments they submit okay what does it mean practically what are the activities that they are doing how we structure these activities hmm? uh, we are not talking about uh, uh, screenshots or buttons or user interfaces yet hmm? but we are just starting to think about how users are executing some action or will be executing some actions in the system that we are designing so this is the goal of the, this task analysis of starting from what is wanted always so don't forget your need finding so uh, once you work a lot of hours for the need finding uh, uh, don't just forget it and and say okay we are building a system that does something different so always start from what is wanted by the user, from the goal of the users. And uh, right, sorry, I had a message about my microphone. Can you hear me normally? Uh, okay. Okay. So I just assume that uh, change the microphone uh, to a non-existent one. Okay, uh, the um, analysis task uh, tries to tra help us translating the needs of the user into the functionality of the system. Okay, so it's what is before the actual design of the system itself. Um, so uh, task analysis is one, one particular uh, activity in which we can study the way people perform their jobs or their activities um and we want to do that for understanding how they are currently doing something or how we plan then uh, for them to do these activities in, in the future in our future system okay so we are we could be analyzing current tasks or the tasks that we are designing for them in a way they say okay they i have a bad experience with this part of the system Okay, let's try to design some tasks in which you could do it in a different way in the future. And so we represent this information. So this, uh, what they do, it could be the present tense or the future tense, what they will do with the system, okay, that, that we are designing. So it's both an analysis and a design tool in this moment, depending on how we are using. If we are trying to uh, analyze and, and understand the system that they are currently using, we are describing current tasks. Otherwise, we are describing future tasks. The, the, the techniques are the same. And for uh, performing these activities, what things? Things means uh, objects, uh, software, tools, uh, devices, or whatever they use. Uh, and also, it's important what they must know in order to be able to perform those tasks. Uh, very simple example. Uh, if you have the task to clean the house, OK, you have a procedure that you get the, the vacuum cleaner and uh, you you attach it to the wall and uh, then clean the room and uh, and put it away and mean, meanwhile if the dust bag gets full you need, you need to replace it for example this is a very simple procedure it's a task that is composed of small of smaller tasks okay it's one possible way of doing that for uh, executing this task you are assuming some knowledge by the user that is going to execute it so the user must know what a vacuum cleaner is of course where it is so where are the cupboards in your house where are the rooms to be cleaned and so on so for in every time where when you are executing something you need to have some prior knowledge about the task that you are trying to 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 accomplish okay so in many cases, the task is clear, would be clear, but you don't have the background knowledge for executing it uh, and so on. So um, these are the two aspects. Of why, that's why we, we are also trying focus, to focus on what the users know. Um, uh, I, I will come to that in a second, David. Um, well, this is another example of uh, another task of preparing an overall projector for for a, for a lecture, for example, and again, 
this is a task which is similar because you need to take a device and plug it in some way, but the projector are usually uh, much uh, worse objects to make working. Uh, they work in strange ways. So in this case, for example, we assume more knowledge uh, about what is uh, you know, the video input, video output, and so on. So some knowledge about the working model of the projector. But apart from that, we have very simple uh, procedures. So we, um, we are trying, in a way, to structure the description of what happens when a user is trying to reach a goal. So up to now, we only discussed about goals, what the user wanted. Okay. Now we are starting to think about uh, the actions that the user will do with our systems. So we have these uh, three different uh, uh, definitions. Uh, for the definition from, from Benjamin, here is, is a task is a goal together with some order set of actions. So yeah, the task is something in between a goal and the concrete actions. Okay. Um, the goal is what we talked about uh, up to now. Uh, many times when we when we were telling you you are you are maybe in your project proposals, uh, but this is a specific task. It's a specific is a specific activity. It's not a goal. It's not a general activity. Okay, because we were talking about what the user will do. The goal, as we know them from the need finding phase, you can define as a state of the application domain that the system wants wishes to achieve state of the application domain so how do we want to, to, to change the, the environment of the, the, the application that we are using so i want to follow a lecture so after that uh, this lecture is available to me for example mm -hmm. so it's a, a final point that they want to reach this is the goal i want to be more satisfied i want to uh, uh, write a thesis i want to and i describe how i would look like uh, uh, after I, write, I reach that goal. Of course, it depends on what goal you're talking about can be at different levels of abstractions. Okay. okay. One goal is I want to, you know, uh, uh, back up all my information. And the, another goal would be I want to, I don't know, uh, fi finish the course or whatever. So it's uh, the goal is the, the final point. To reach the goal, you need to do some set of activities, okay, in a given order with some rules. And these activities will be done by you, the human, or by the machine or by the computer, okay? Um, the term here, work system, is a strange term that was in the books uh, that describes uh, the user plus the technology, plus the system, okay? Because maybe some steps will be achieved by the user, some steps will be achieved by automatically or by the interaction with, with the tool. Okay. Uh, uh, of course, with the vacuum cleaner, clean the rooms is not something that the user will do alone. He will do it with the vacuum cleaner, which is an object, a technology that works together with the user to reach the goal. Okay. That's why we are talking about both of, both of them together. And uh, and every task can be decomposed and broken down into smaller tasks. So the, to answer David, we don't have a specific word for that. A task is composed of other smaller tasks or subtasks until we get to the elementary atomic tasks that we, we can call actions. Now, actions are like the, the simple tasks that don't need to be decomposed anymore because they already uh, clear they already uh, can be executed uh, as they are okay uh, the definition is that it's a task uh, that has no problem solving associated there's no thinking there are no different ways of doing that uh, and does not include any control structure so it doesn't repeat it doesn't uh, it isn't optional or so so it's about the basic activities that, uh, that you that you accomplish of course the basic activities can be at different abstraction levels too okay so this is a, just a general framework of course hmm? Uh, but we need, need always be, to be clear whether we are describing tasks and actions. So uh, individual actions or sequences or groups of actions that compose tasks uh, that are separate from the goal that we want to reach. Hmm? 
The goal is something static and say, okay, that's the top of the hill. That's my goal. The task is how to get there. In need finding, we were focused about the goal. In analysis, we are starting to think about how we get there. Um, so task analysis uh, uh, is trying to help you understand better what uh, users uh, want. Okay, they expressed it, but uh, we need to uh, we, we can understand it better why and how, uh, what they are actually doing to achieve these goals. Uh, if they are already doing that in some way and you want to change. Um, and what is the background they, they're bringing? So the knowledge that you already have when they are uh, using the, uh, this task. Okay, so people maybe uh, are used to uh, work with some tool. They come at the university, there are different tools and they try to use the new tools like they were using the previous ones. Okay, or in a similar way. And this is good or bad, I don't know, but. Uh, uh, we must take that into account, no? the, the, the background of the, of the, of the persons. And um, so that will influence uh, the mental models uh, that they build uh, and the workflow that they will follow, they will choose. Um, there was a very interesting fight uh, that they was following uh, nearly one month ago when the classes began for the freshman or the first year of the of the laurea degree, of the bachelor degree. Uh, you know uh, that uh, we have all the, not we, you students have all these telegram groups, uh, one per each course uh, and so on. And uh, that are very well organized and so on. So I know that uh, you are using them, but we are, we teachers, we are not welcome there. So we, we don't go there, but we know that they exist. And uh, uh, the, the manager of these groups uh, just created a lot of uh, telegram groups for the first uh, year students, uh, the first year of the bachelor students. And there was a very bad fight in these uh, groups because students, uh, many students wanted to use uh, WhatsApp instead of Telegram. And uh, even if they didn't understand that it's not the right tool you know, because it has a lot of limitations, like uh, for example, I think 200 people maximum in a group uh, and the, the courses at the first year are, are much are much bigger, so they will never fit there. And uh, apart from other uh, kind of uh, discussion about privacy or the, and uh, and it was very uh, str strange because there was a very uh, a better solution, but people didn't like it because they were they were accustomed to something different, which actually was not so much different, but they were resisting. So at the end of the story, do you want to know what it is? That every group, uh, every course now has two groups, uh, one on WhatsApp and the other on Telegram. So the worst of all possible outcomes. And uh, why? That's uh, that's a real question. Because the the person that will, were building those uh, Telegram groups uh, did that uh, with the knowledge of the more experienced students uh, that they were already accustomed to the system and they already realized that it was good for them. And they, did, they didn't account, but it was not their job. They are just volunteer students, so there's nothing against them. But it, the operation, there was a good operation, uh, failed uh, because it didn't take into account uh, the background of the students that were coming in. Okay. Um, okay. I, I don't know uh, how it could have been done better, but uh, uh, at least we can an analyze what went wrong. Okay. There was a, a critical piece of information that was missing. Um, why is this task analysis useful? Why do we spend time trying to decompose the task of the users? Uh, okay, we, uh, we need to understand better how the users are performing their goals. Of course, it's a necessary uh, information because if we want to build a system that uh, uh, really uh, supports them, we must understand how they are how they are working. Hmm? Um, and there are uh, you know, several tasks, uh, there are steps in the design process that, that will come later where task analysis will help us. Uh, also in doing a prototype, uh, also in when we do usability testing, we will uh, test the user while the user is executing a specific task. Uh, so all this terminology of tasks that we are doing now will uh, be useful throughout all the design project because right now, uh, after that, uh, we will, uh, think of our project as the, the set of tasks uh, tasks that it allows uh, the users to do. Hmm? 
and the task analysis will also help us in defining the structure of the website, the navigation, the menus, uh, the pages, uh, because the different uh, um, parts of the menus, the different icons in the, I don't know, in the in inter the user interface will activate different tasks in the system. And so we want to see which are the tasks and how they relate to each other, how they're connected to each other in some way. Um, so this is a very preliminary uh, operation, but uh, will give information that we'll use uh, throughout uh, the whole process. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an example mm -hmm. uh, of a very common dialogue window uh, that probably was put together by thinking about the different uh, tasks for printing. So the task for printing is uh, uh, select the printer, uh define which uh, part of the document you want to print uh, define how many copies and uh, define the details uh, of how to convert the document to a printable format so we have this uh, big task which is printing that is sort of composed of uh, four different parts where do we want to print what range do we want to print how many copies and uh, how to transfer the document this can be in, executed or specified in different order, but all, all uh, these four will make up, uh, the combination of these four will make up the printing task in general. And you see that this dialogue window, uh, in a way with the separation of the items, is trying to reconstruct or to present to the user some actions, actions, so buttons to click, uh, uh, printers to select, uh, so the low-level actions that are grouped, these actions are available and are grouped according to that subtask they contribute to. So, in, so instead of having all the checkboxes randomly listed, we are grouping them according to the tasks in which they appear or the subtasks in which they appear. And so we are in a way, of sort of a, the final result, okay, uh, or the, the visual design of this window takes into account that the printing task is decomposed into four main tasks. Uh, all of them are optional probably, or they have sensible defaults. And then in each of these subtasks, there are again sub subtasks. So the subtask of finding a print range is not just a, a number, not just a button, but it may have one, two, three, four different ways of expressing itself and also how to print how to transform the document is that it has several options down, down there hmm? so even each one of these four tasks is decomposed again into subtasks of the, of, of the second level until we get to the actual actions that are maybe this checkbox to be checked or cleared hmm? so this is one possible uh, outcome uh, of the analysis of the tasks in the system. The task will map some, sometimes, it's not a general rule, uh, may, may help you to design the interface. Tasks are something that are in the mind, in the habits of the users, are what the users do and how the user think. And so if we can rebuild the interface in a way that the user will feel at home because the interface will uh, you know, think or uh, present itself in the same way in which they are expecting a task to be accomplished. Um, okay. Uh, and so uh, in, in general, you know, this task of text analysis, it comes after need, find, need finding. So need finding is composed of observations and uh, interviews. Maybe also documentation. No? In some cases, uh, to understand how people are doing, you have if you have some manuals, if you have some instructions from a current or previous system, it may also be important information to get. And the task we learn to do here is to extract information from the finding. So, okay, getting this information and sorting, classifying, matching, organizing. So it's basically a sorting uh, exercise here in task analysis. Uh, uh, and uh, refine, iterate, sorting until we find a good model of how the tasks are organized in the mind of the users. And this 
uh, outcome will be useful in the later stages of the project, as I already mentioned, you know, for designing user interfaces in visual design. We will map, uh, for example, menu layouts uh, or page layouts into the taxonomies of the different entities. This is something that we are uh, going to, to see here. Um, the, the tasks uh, that are more or less frequent probably will help us to define which are the default values for uh, for the different interface elements. And these interface elements will come from the objects that are mentioned in the description of the tasks. Okay, remember that uh, the task we have, what the user does and what are the tools that he will use. So the second is the objects or the, co or the concepts will map in a way to the user interface. So we help us to uh, write in the visual language uh, this, the same concepts that we already uh, analyzed uh, in the in the initial phase. Uh, also, the task will tell us what the system will do, which is most the most important one. Uh, help us draft, write, or fix the requirements for our system. In this way we will never say the system supports 47 different features. No, the system will support four or five tasks. And the tasks are always users doing something. Of course, this task will be decomposed into actions and every action will, will be supported by a system feature. But if you start from the system feature, you get lost because uh, you, you lose sight of why and when is the user using that, that, that feature. Okay, um, an example, uh, grayscale, for example. Does it make sense in printing or does it make sense in view, in the view menu? I could want to see it in, in, uh, in grayscale. And uh, they decided that grayscale was uh, more, say, a printing feature because uh, in viewing, it didn't make too much sense. It, there is a uh, there was a grayscale option in the print preview that will let you see how it would come out. Uh, so the feature of uh, converted to grayscale is there, but where does it appear? Where does it make more sense to appear from the user point of view? When will the user need to think about that? Okay, this comes from the task of printing. That will include the feature of gray grayscale conversion. If we start from the features, uh, we will not have any framework to put them together. Okay, um, so it's always a lot of top-down reasonment that top down de de deriving from the user analysis. If there are some tasks, maybe some of them can be automated totally by the system, totally or partially by the system. So we see that if in this task, uh, the subtask number one, two, three, four may be uh done automatically by the system so the user will not need to do them anymore and uh, uh, for example one very stupid task i'm always fighting against in, in online lectures is sharing the link come on it's 2020 and we still need to cut and paste a link every time we want to meet that, that there don't we have any better way Okay, even in the virtual classroom, the, it, send, it sends you a mail with, that contains a link and you need to click on the link to open the, okay. And it's a stupid thing. It's a feature of the system, but probably I don't want to see that. In my tasks, I would not uh, think of, uh, of having that feature. I would think about, okay, this is the lecture. Is there a class in this moment? Yes, let me in. That's it, okay. Um, just a, as a as a stupid example okay or think it or think that we take for granted but there are in really some steps some actions that could be automated away in a way if we think about them okay well is this really needed no how can we remove it hmm? so that's it's an opportunity you now for providing a better system that will be more usable by the user because they need to do less actions hmm? um Okay, and there's also another, uh, let's say, uh, output uh, after task analysis, uh, we, we don't care too much about because, you know, we are very rude engineers and we don't write documentation, much less uh, we read it. 
and uh, uh, but actually um, for real system when you need the documentations uh, having the breakdown of the system operation into separate tasks uh, is a great uh, uh, resource in order to structure your documentation information structure the training for teaching uh, people how to use uh, um, how to use the system and uh, being explicitly explicit sorry about uh, what the user need to know in order to understand the instruction i would have some examples uh, how many times did you get some instructions that are telling you um, I, I i think about maybe the instruction for how to use the uh, the virtual classroom of the Polytechnic, okay? Um, and these instructions give you some steps to do, but maybe they don't explain you what you get when you're doing these steps. Should, do, do I want to do those? I, it depends on what I want to achieve. So in many times, uh, a bad documentation is a documentation that will tell you what to do and not why, or will not tell you the goal that you will reach if you do this steps if you do these tasks because they are more fixed on the more focused on the sequence of actions than on the meaning of the task that will compose these actions put together so uh, it's always important to start from what do a, what does a student need to do and explain okay if you need to do this then execute these actions but the, when you go to the execution of the actions, you already know that what is the goal that you are reaching, and not just a, a sequence of actions that you. Uh, uh, some people will tell you, but you have a step-by-step -step instruction. What's the problem? Uh, the problem is that they follow the step, but I don't know where they where, where they will lead me. Hmm? They are blindfolding me and saying, "Okay, follow the steps." Uh, no, I want to know what you're leading me, where you're leading me, because it may be if, you are, if I have a little problem, I need to be able to understand what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, many of the problems that you had during the exams with the responders and stuff like that, uh, and the uh, login to the portal, it, are due to the fact that there is a, a procedure, but you, where there is no the, the conceptual framework in which that procedure lives. And so as a user, if something goes wrong, I don't know what to do because it's not in the procedure and I don't have the knowledge to understand that I need to switch to a different procedure that will solve me my problem. So all of this could be avoided if we write, uh, if we invested better in the documentation and especially writing the documentation from the point of view, again, of the actions of the user and not from the point of view of the system features that need to be activated in uh, one after the other. So uh, it's a it's a rich uh, activity here that will uh, no, uh, be reused, uh, may be reused a lot uh, in later stages. Um, the documentation as an input for task analysis. David is asking uh, this box uh, is if you are if you already have a system and you are working on it for improving it, maybe this system already has a documentation. So a lot of the information about how it's working is already available and you, you don't need to gather it from the users, okay? Because it's already there. The difference is that the documentation will tell you how the system is supposed to work and the observation will tell you how the people are actually using it, which are normally separate or different and different points are the important part that you need uh, to discover. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. Okay, there are, uh, and with this slide I close, uh, some many techniques for analysis. If you open a book, they will propose a new one because people really like to propose new stuff. Um, we will focus uh, our attention mainly on uh, two uh, techniques. Uh, one is called a, a task. One is a technique uh, in, follows the approach of task decomposition. So a task is broken down with smaller tasks and so on. Uh, from the from the say, op operational point of view, no, or from the execution point of view of the task. And we also have uh, some, uh, uh, some, some time, we'll devote some time uh, to analyze some uh, one possible knowledge-based technique uh, where instead of decomposing tasks, uh, we will de decompose concepts, uh, okay? 
um, that in many cases uh, it will help us uh, to structure the, the navigation of the system. So there are two complementary views. One is uh, operational, what are the sequences, uh, uh, the possible sequences of actions, and the other is, the other is uh, more conceptual. Uh, what are the main concepts and the, uh, how do they relate with each other? Mm -hmm. These two views uh, are, both of them will give us hierarchies, the trees of actions or tasks uh, from the task decomposition or the trees of concepts from the knowledge based approaches that we may, it's a, they are a sort of a, of a, of a map or a blueprint for how the, our application will look like. Mm -hmm. So uh, next week uh, we are uh, we will dig into these uh, two techniques for task analysis, uh, and uh, while the other ones uh, are more specific, uh, like uh, this, this one is a way of using the entity relationship models that we are already know from the database to describe uh, uh, concepts and actions inside the uh, interactive systems. But uh, we chose just to focus on these two uh, techniques uh, and especially on, on the most of the time will be more the focus will be on the first one. Uh, and as usual, uh, I finish my time here. And so we need to continue uh, this discussion uh, next week on next uh, Tuesday. Uh, have fun uh, on Thursday tomorrow in the lab. Just remember that the first hour is, uh, uh, is uh, for the group that will choose, uh, group of students will choose to follow in presence. Uh, we have this. Uh, uh, permission to, to open the labs and we are very happy about that and uh, and the second uh, uh, half from 11 30 will be uh, totally online okay there will be no mixed uh, uh, lab so for the people that who are in lab we will not be connected by answering the question online and uh, everybody who is online will need to be uh, to say uh, to attend the second shift hmm? okay but all this information of course we are you are sharing all the details in Slack uh, later today. So thanks uh, for listening and coming here. And uh, it's one o'clock, so have a nice lunch uh, this, today. See you next week. Bye bye.